Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage, where we are eagerly anticipating the return of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Oh, my God. Thrawn's back? He's going to be back. Oh, my God. And sitting on his throne. Yeah. <laughs> his eponymous throne. The toilet. Yes. They call it the Dunny in Star Wars, don't That's, they? They absolutely do, yes. Yeah, yeah. Similar to the Australian vernacular. Anyways, if everyone could leave a like, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't you leave a like <laughs> after this? We're talking about the season finale, mm. the extra long episode, or two together, however they edit, of Star Wars Rebels, mm. which ran for four seasons. Sure. Brought back some characters you might love and integrated them into animated form. We got a Lando. We got a Darth Maul. Not in these episodes. No. I'm, I'm naming other episodes. <laughs> okay, great. Have you seen all this show? Yeah, I've seen all, it all. All four seasons. All four seasons. Well, I've seen about four episodes. There you go. For this video series. Absolutely ultimately. you have, yeah. So why not start with the end? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Why not skip nearly four seasons? <laughs> Effectively, I've skipped four seasons and I've gone right till the end. Well, what I like And to guess what? It didn't affect me at all. <laughs> no? I didn't feel one way or another, really. <laughs> Okay, what about this And I blame the series, quite frankly. (laughs) So all the characters you know and love are back. Sure. Name name them all. Ezra. Yep. He was the little he was the little boy. That and little... he's grown into a little man. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's wonderful. He's got a scar and everything. Uh, Sabine. Yep, there you go. She's got the purple hair. Yep. Um she's gonna be in Ahsoka, right? Correct. She's gonna well, be in that. So is Ezra, yep. Yeah, okay. Uh Mutton Chops. Mutton ch- Mike Mutton Chops. Oh, mi- Mr. Mike Mutton Chops. Mike Mutton Chops. Well, yeah. he was with the Empire, and then he came came over. Damn, that explains the outfit. Exactly. Yeah. Mr. Mutton Chops. Um, pig Boy? Yeah. Little Pig Boy. <laughs> Little Pig Boy, fake me own death Pig Boy. Yeah, yeah. He got shot. Yeah, he did. It's true. <laughs> Luckily, he has no valuable internal organs. <laughs> so him getting shot doesn't matter. <laughs> so He's what? just lard internally. I think that's cool. <laughs> so... I like this show. Was that a prank? Was he doing a prank? <laughs> no. Or is he just... Were they were they stuck in this episode? They're like, we need somebody to make a sacrifice, but because it's kind of sort of a show for kids, yeah. we can't have somebody die for real for real, so we'll just have him die and then just be like, well, these particular weird freak aliens can just not die, actually. Well, the characters die in this. One of the leads, Kanan Jarrus. Oh. You know the blind Jedi? He's got yeah. the little ponytail. Sure. Or he did at one point. Mm-hmm. He gets murdered by a big ball of fire. Wow. Yeah. Sneaks into his room and stabs him. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Well. So it will... You'd think you'd see that coming, you know? Well, he's blind. The thing about... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You think you'd feel it coming? Yeah, you think you would, yeah. yeah. I, I like this show because I think it, to me, a lot of the times, thematically, it feels very Star Wars. Uh-huh. I think also it does have that appeal to kids, but it's not strictly for kids. Mm. I think it's fun. I think most of the new characters they introduce, like, I, I got invested in. Mm. I mean, if you do watch it through, I think you might even feel that. I won't. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I will. So Convince me in the comments. I'll read them. <laughs> Wink. So, Wink. Well, there are elements of this, though, and this isn't so much a review, it, it just more like, what, what do you think about this? But uh-huh. was it confusing when there's, like, there's wolves and there's, like, a grey gorilla? I do have a note that says big dogs. <laughs> and it was very confusing for most of the episode because I'm like, what scale is this? <laughs> do you think this is one of those situations where somebody just bumped a slider? when they were designing all the characters. But do you think they were like, they were supposed to be regular sized dogs? And then somebody like no, accidentally I... set a, changed the setting and like, you know how like Lara Croft's boobs were yeah, supposed yeah. to be normal size and then somebody quote unquote accidentally changed the accidentally, setting. Accidentally, yeah. Yeah, man, that's how graphic design works, I reckon. <laughs> you freaks. <laughs> You big pervs. Well, it worked, didn't it? It did, actually. We're <laughs> still talking about it. I know. Well, I think Dave Filoni, who has a big hand in all of the Star Wars animated stuff mm. and oversees a lot of these projects in general, he has like an affinity for wolves and he'll often slot them into different Star Wars He's projects. He's got an affinity for wolves? Gonna... Do you think he has a full wolf back tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he has the three wolf knight back tattoo? Yeah, front and back. Wow. Yeah. So, Thrawn. Mm. Appears in this again. Yeah. Now he has been a series regular. Yeah, okay. If you I, say so, he has. And they, that's a Mickelson, right? That's a Mickelson who's reprising the role again. Okay. I I like this version of the character. What, mm. what do you remember of Thrawn growing up? Because Blue? he was yes, because he was a Legends character brought in. That's right. And there was a handful of them which kind of broke through. Mm. I wouldn't necessarily say mainstream, but their popularity. Well, look, I will say this: he's blue. And yeah. I think that's pushed him over the line, ultimately. Because <laughs> people are like, blue guy, love that. Blue guy, yeah. I love that, actually. Because I feel like the characterization of this guy in this series, and not just this finale, he's just not quite there yet. Interesting. And I know that 
there are books, canon books, that kind of deal with his origin and mm-hmm. kind of his early days in the Empire and that. And his early days in the Blue Man Group. <laughs> exactly, yeah. His early days in the Smurfs. <laughs> his early days... Um, that Paul Giamatti movie where he's painted blue. Perfect, yep. Yeah. He's in that. Yep, three good examples. But I guess at the same time, you know, I, I feel like you don't get the full potential of him, but also his, his full potential is kind of realised as a Star Wars sequel, which is okay, hopefully right. something that, that we'll be seeing. But every time he kind of showed up in this series, like he had this kind of master plan. Okay. And then like the rebels would get away and he's like, this is good and a thing I wanted. And oh. This isn't maybe uh, we didn't win this, but I'll, I've got a plan this for the next the, thing. This sounds like... I've looked at all your art. Yeah, this is the, this is the Dark Knight. But just over and over again. Every time, every time they they escape or whatever, he's like, "I wanted you to escape." And eventually, all his underlings are like, are "You sure this, you sure this guy knows what he's doing?" Yeah. You wanted them to escape and kick you in the nuts on the way out, did, did you, Grand Admiral Thrawn? Is that you wanted that? It's part of your four dimensional chess, is it? Or your four dimensional, fifth dimensional Star Wars chess? Mm, mm. Hollow chess. Yes. But even in this, like, his master plan, oh, yes. because they overtake the facility, uh-huh. and then he's like, well, h- well, how's about this? I'm just going to start shelling civilians. And I don't feel that's that's just standard imperial procedure. Seems that way, I'm yeah. sure if you just opened a book, it would be on most pages. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You Rebels know? do anything. Start shelling civilians. Oh, they've shot the they've shot the lock to the door in a way that locks the door if it's unlocked, but it unlocks the door if it's locked. What do we do? I'll check the book. No, I shell some civilians. <laughs> actually, oh, that guy had like a like a dental floss sized box of grappling wire on his belt, and he's hurled it across a, a pipe or whatever, and he's swung across a crevasse. Mm-hmm. What do we do? Shell civilians, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, as a master strategist, I don't feel like we ever really. Saw it here. He's as evil or as talented as anybody, including that woman who looks like um, Kate Blanchett. Kate in, Blanchett in Crystal Skull. Yeah, <laughs> I have. I've written that down. I have uh, Kate Blanchett in Crystal Skull, looking ass, Imperial Lady. <laughs> is she? She's. Is she coming up in future installments or no, in she live action or something? She yeah. was in the ship that exploded. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, escape pods, etc. Escape pods, etc. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, mm. but look, you know, he certainly got a lot of those rectangles. You know, oh, those rectangles does, that true. mean. Certain things, yeah, apparently. Yeah, you get those down to the pharmacist. I feel like you get them in a <laughs> get yeah. them in a blister pack. I feel like what I love about that kind of stuff is George Lucas or the costume designers of the original kind. Mm-hmm. You put them on randomly, right? And then anybody going back to that has to make sense of it. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. It's like the first time that Harrison Ford had to fly the Millennium Falcon. So Harrison Ford said to George Lucas, "How do you, how do you like fly this yeah, thing?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And George Lucas is like, "I don't know." Whatever. The one and only time Harrison Ford's <laughs> been invested in the inner workings of the Star Wars universe. Yeah. I don't care. George Lucas provided him with one piece of magic that propelled him forward for decades. I don't know, just do whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. since then, whenever any, anybody else has had to use the, yeah. mo- the Millennium Falcon or whatever, the Karelian Cruiser or whatever it's yeah. called, they have to follow his lead. The exactly. random thing that he did yeah, in right. 1976 mm. when they filmed it in on an English st- sound stage. So push this button and push this button. And then sell some marijuana to your co-stars. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly, maybe. You know what I do like about this also? Go on. The appearance of the Emperor. Oh, yes. Ian McDermott is back to mm. do the voice of. Which I he, did like that. Yeah, he does every now and then. I love all that. I thought that. it was quite a um, like a measured performance. Yeah. It's not the full cackling, but I guess he's supposed to be. Mm. He's, he's masquerading as the as, as uh, Senator Palpatine. Every face a different shade. Mm. Yeah. No, I love that because... This is never really explored in like the original trilogy or the second original trilogy. <laughs> yes. Like his face is fucked. Yeah. So oh, yeah. what people see of him uh-huh. in public yeah. is like that. Yeah. You know? So I, th- I think that's a really interesting, you know, way to kind of look at mm. it. And you know, those holograms, they're low res as shit. You're not seeing, yeah, right. you're not yeah, seeing yeah, anything, yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah, Could yeah. Could be anyone in there. Scan lines can hide all sorts of, I mean, that that's the perfect, you know, forget Zoom. Yeah. If you just get up and you have to have an early morning meeting, you want to be on the hologram thing. With Absolutely. The thing, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? You don't even need a background. Because oh your background God. is nothing. Your background is nothing. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, you'd, you'd missed out though because Ezra was about to gain access to the Star Wars time travel room. Right now, so <laughs> so 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 this is this has not appeared in live action yet, right? Yeah. yeah. But but this is a and I I'm sort of tangentially aware that this is an element of this series that there is a way to travel through time. There's some sort of magic tree or something. Is that what's happening? Yeah. There? So it's basically a realm that you enter, uh-huh. which allows you access to different key points in the Star Wars universe. Oh. Uh, so 
Do you remember that? It's called a DVD menu. <laughs> we don't have them anymore. We don't, do we? No. So the episode, the last one that we actually covered, mm. the way that Ahsoka escapes that fight with Darth Vader is she she's pulled into the world between oh, worlds. Right, yeah, and Darth yeah, yeah. Vader's just like, what the fuck just happened here? Come on, man. I'm, con- I'm confused. <laughs> I mean, he's always confused. Mm. You know, he's, he's easily baffled. Mm. What? His peripherals are just junk. Oh, my God, no good. <laughs> God, it's hot in this suit, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you see him around the corner. He's got half the helmet off. He's having a smoke. I feel like like the chest plate should emit the noise of like an overheating PlayStation Three. <laughs> you know? Oh no, the red ring, <laughs> red ring of death. I do wonder though, because I feel like some kind of melding with original Star Wars is going to happen eventually. And I how, feel like so how do you what do you mean there? Well, you introduced a time travel room. Yes, uh-huh. and even <laughs> if you don't intend to use it to go back and wave to Luke Skywalker or whatever. Mm. Someone's eventually going to do that, right? I guess, yeah. Yeah, so Uh I just feel like inevitably Mm. someone's going to see Han Solo get frozen from behind a a column of steam or something. I mean, they might also attempt to do what the Star Trek franchise did, which is alter the timeline so you can then sort of reboot with a new cast. Okay. Like they did with the most recent three. And then you run that into the ground and then you go back. Run it into the ground. (laughs) Some people like some of them. I like some of them. I like some of them too. I like one and three. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you like it when Zeb, who we've seen in live action, uh, fights the grey gorilla? I liked it because they're both uh, hands feet guys. Oh, yeah, that's fun, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, what a punch up. Right? I mean, I kind of feel like they missed opportunity mm-hmm. there. Leg you know, arm wrestle? Yeah. yeah. Just four, four fists flying? Oh, yeah, that's true as well. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Here's something else I like about this. Go on. I enjoy the evolution of a number of things sure. <laughs> uh, in this series. Now, human evolution you don't believe in. Well, it's not true. Yeah, right. How could you believe in something that's not true, Mason? Right? Yeah. Uh, how do we evolve from gorillas if there's gorillas right there? <laughs> Wouldn't we have hand feet as well? <laughs> yeah, we don't. Checkmate. That's right. Checkmate, atheists. Thank you for playing that recording of me. You're welcome. Uh, one thing that original Star Wars and mm. second original trilogy never really did was lean into that different Jedi have different skills beyond being good at fighting or sitting in a library. Right. right? Uh-huh. Those were kind of the two things that mm. they did. Right? Yeah, jocks and nerds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Slobs and snobs. That's right. Yeah. But for Ezra, for example, and you see this here when Thrawn gets dragged away by whales, mm. he has an affinity for animals, and that ties yeah, into okay, the wolves right. and the whales and other creatures that he comes across during the series. Okay. Is, has, he, has he made friends with those whales earlier in the series? Is that why they come back? First time. No, not really. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, it's a tremendous payoff if you know what's coming, Mason. Mm, Interesting. So I love that. Ezra is an animal guy and Cal Kestis Uh is an animal murderer. He loves to kill an animal, doesn't he? Shout out to Cameron Monaghan. Love that character, by the way. I would love to see him murder animals in live action. Oh, or in real life. Yeah, whatever. That's live action. (laughs) That is live action, yeah. If you can send us a video real quick, we'll (laughs) slot it in here. Slot it in right here. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. So yeah, I feel like across this series, there really is a great exploration of each individual character within this, which maybe mm. you didn't get. If you say so. <laughs> right. I certainly didn't say yeah. it. And even seeing like the occupation of Lothal, which is the planet that they're on. Interesting. And how that you know comes to a head and then wraps up. I liked all of that. But then what I didn't particularly care for was the time jump. So at the end they go, anyway, so we waited for the Empire to come back and then they didn't. <laughs> okay. And then the original trilogy happened mm. and now we're here. Great. Love and that. it's just kind of like, okay, well, Star Wars has a big problem with introducing characters that are alive mm. and then having them not appear in the original yeah, trilogy. Right. It's not a problem. Now we're here five years after Return of the Jedi, the perfect <laughs> time to be alive. That's right. Just wonderful. To have anything. What adventures are here before us? That's right. We don't know yet. There is one character, though. Oh, yes. Who may very well appear in the original trilogy. Not the second original trilogy. <laughs> Now, are you team... Is it me? No, it's not you. Uh. Are you team Captain Rex or team Nick Sant? I'm going to say Captain Rex because he's the only name I recognise. Okay, so <laughs> in Return of the Jedi, okay. there is an old guy oh, with yeah. a big bushy beard. Making love to his tonic and gin. No, Mason. Oh. So he's on Han Solo's Endor strike team. Okay, sure. Right? You see him in the background. Okay. And Dave Filoni speculated that the only reason that an old guy like that would be there is because he is somebody like Rex. So he's a clone or 
someone else. Or he's, you know, he has a, he had a good contract and they can't fire him. That's probably with it the, too. With the Rebels, you know? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but six months after that episode aired, uh, Filoni revealed in an interview with IGN that he chose not to canonize that theory because he felt laying down an already established character prior to his coming to Star Wars wasn't correct, adding that Rex could have been present at Endor, which he was, which we know he was, oh. and it not be Sant. And fans can choose. They can choose who they who they want that to be. Wow. Yeah. I choose both of them. You know what it's time for now, though? What's it time for? Star Wars trivia, but in relation to the finale of Rebels and the show in general. That's what we're doing now. That's what we're going to do. That's, this is very relevant. So the concept of this show is very similar to what Dave Filoni and Henry Gilroy had originally planned for Star Wars The Clone Wars in 2008. Who's Henry Gilroy? The other guy who worked on that. Is he related to Tony Gilroy? No. Interesting. But they might be. I can't rule it out, Here's can two you? pictures. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Something to think about. Uh. So it was assumed that characters like Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker would not return as main characters. So the idea was to focus on a crew on a Millennium Falcon-styled smuggling ship which included a Twi'lek called Sendak and a bunch of other people who basically ended up in this series. Yeah, That's cool. Uh, the visual style of the show was also heavily inspired by the original Star Wars concept art by Ralph McQuarrie. Mm. So much so that even the lightsabers are thinner, just like McQuarrie's paintings. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you like the animation in this show? Yeah. Interesting. Why is that interesting? I don't know if I do like it. Is it the, what is it, the faces, the movements? Because you like the Clone Wars stuff. I've never seen Paw Patrol. Yeah. But I feel if there were humans in Paw Patrol, yeah. they'd look like these guys. That's not inaccurate. Interesting. As someone who has seen Paw Patrol. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just, it's, 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 something's off about them. Well, the Clone Wars was, like, that took a Thunderbirds aesthetic. Mm. And this kind of deviated from that. So okay. any character in Clone Wars that appears in this, they do get, like, a slight redesign. Interesting. Yeah, they kind of do that for each animated series. They... They change it up. Well, I hate it. <laughs> I didn't think you hated it, but it sounds like you actually hate it. Mm, maybe it's an Uncanny Valley thing. Maybe it is. Now, although there are many similarities between Ezra Bridger and Disney's Aladdin, both in his appearance and also his street rat background, uh, Dave Filoni insists that his inspiration for the character was actually Ralph Macchio as the Karate Kid. Huh. Yeah. It's a bit of fun. I agree. This show also is the first appearance of Graffiti in a Star Wars show or film. Oh. Is that true? Maybe. Yeah, it might be. Thrawn was designed to look near, but not quite human. So he's got more prominent brows and cheekbones. And uh, he's also... <laughs> yeah. And it's, he's also blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, you know, anybody out there, anybody out there who looks even slightly like Grand Admiral Thrawn, guess what? They think you're a freak. Yeah, exactly. You look near human, but not quite human. Well, are you listening? The guy who plays him, Mickelson, <laughs> whichever Mickelson you are. <laughs> Lars. They think you're a freak, Lars. Yep. Yeah, they wanted to make him feel like slightly off. So that's how they did it. Uh, the design of Zeb is based on Ralph McQuarrie's early concept art for Chewbacca huh. with the addition of stripes. And Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia, here's just a bit of, um, a bit of Star Wars timeline lore, oh, yeah, which great. I know you love. Mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia were born the day after the formation of the Galactic Empire and also Ezra Bridger's birth, which makes them a day younger than Ezra Bridger. Huh. So there you go. Same age. Maybe they'll do an adventure together. Maybe. Yeah. I bet when Ezra Bridger has a birthday, he gets a text from both of them and they're like, nice one, old man. <laughs> Happy birthday, you old sack of potatoes. <laughs> we got you nothing and that's from both of us. <laughs> that's right. And it's for your birthday and Christmas. <laughs> Anyways, normally talk box office, but obviously this is not a box office situation. Mm, do you have uh, ratings or reviews? or? Yeah, people have, like uh, it. People okay, like it. Great. People like it. Oh, yeah, good, good, good. It's good, good Mason. Yeah, it is pretty, good. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I think you prefer more of the Clone Wars episodes. Is that right? I don't remember. You saw the Clone Wars finale and you thought it was terrific. Did I? I don't know. We did a video on it, so That's I assume great. you watched it. Yeah. <laughs> If somebody could summarise my thoughts on that in the comments, that that'd, would be, be that'd be true. Incredibly handy. Yeah, but here's the thing, Mason. Go on. Often people say, James, are these available early? And are if they? so, do you have a platform called bigsandwich.co where we can watch them early for only nine bucks a month? That and question suggests they already know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's a leading question that's yeah. kind of sarcastic. Like, why didn't you tell me? Man. I found out on my own. I why didn't all, you tell me? I yeah. have all the information already. Yeah. Man. Anyways, yes, that's true. That's great. That is available there, but it's not the only thing there. There's thousands of hours of Ooh. bonus podcasts. Ooh. Is that true? Thousands? Maybe. It's a lot. Millions. Yeah. We do bonus movie commentaries. We do video game Let's that's Plays. That's right. We do a comic book club. That's right. Uh, our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that comes out there Sunday ad-free as opposed to Monday. It's all ad-free. That's right. Well, would anyone like a hint towards next week? No. 
I'm speaking for the audience. Anybody else other than Mason? I'm speaking for everyone. (laughs) No. There's going to be no hint this week. So hit Mason up at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. I will not tell you. (laughs) I'll never tell. (laughs) What is it they tell me? No. Oh, wow. You said no. But I have to watch it. Doesn't matter. Oh, my God. Figure it out like everybody else. I will. That sounds good. What a fun challenge. (laughs) All right. Thanks, everyone. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. For whatever that is. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye.